Sit back, relax, and get ready to absorb all the information regarding the chemistry behind the creation of cheese presented to you by Montana Woods, Tim Mason, and Tristan Steele. First of all, the common misconception that cheese is old milk is wrong. The process is much more complicated than you may think. The first step in creating milk starts at the milk producing organism. For this video, we'll stick to a cow, but it could be a goat, or a llama, or your own personal favorite milk producing organism. Once the milk is taken from said organism, it is put into a large container specifically for milk. Then, lactic acid bacteria is added to the milk, which could be Streptococcus, Lactococcus, and Lactobacillus, for example. Depending on the cheese, the type of bacteria is chosen based on its common metabolic and physiological characteristics. Because these bacteria are commonly found in decomposing plants and lactic products, the end product is usually a carbohydrate fermentation. Technically, the bacteria poses an additional blockade for spoilage and pathogenic microorganisms. Additionally, the acid and other metabolic products contribute to the visual taste and texture of a food item. This also kickstarts the curdling process. Depending on the type of cheese, dye can be added to the liquid substance to enhance the visual appearance of the product. In addition to the bacteria, the lactic mixture is inoculated with rennet. Rennet liberates the bacteria from the hairs which allow the micelles to form chains as they naturally run into one another. They get larger in size as they overlap to eventually form a gel network with trapped water and fat inside of it. Essentially, the rennet turns the liquid substance into a gel, which is commonly referred to as a curd. The curd is then drained, usually with a mesh bag, to remove the excess water. Sodium chloride, also known as salt, is then added to create a high ionic strength that helps solidify the substance by allowing the protein strands to stick together. The salt also helps to ensure that the cheese does not spoil as it cures. Curds are then placed in a cheese press and large amounts of pressure are applied to the cheese to give it its shape and remove any water that has been left behind. The cheese is then left to age for several hours, days, months, or even years so that bacteria have time to ferment the lactose and develop the cheese texture. For example, in Swiss cheese, bubbles are produced over the aging period. Add a dash of magic, and there you have it, folks. That is the chemistry behind the creation of cheese. We hope you enjoyed this production. Here are some examples of cheese. The end result of this project.